Welcome back to the Urathon 2018 call now, 1877 7 auction, 1877 7 7 7 7 auction. Uh, I'm Elchanan Schwartz here together with my uh, compañero, Rabbi Avi Schnell, um, and welcoming in uh, right now for this um, segment uh, who will join us tonight is uh, Rabbi Eli Bohm, who has been a mashpia in the Zone Boys Division for over 10 years. He's a prolific Marbitz Torah. Uh, Rabbi Bohm gives a daily shir in Yeshiva Mayan HaTorah in Lakewood and writes a Halacha Brewer column in the Yosei Nemon and elsewhere. Rabbi Bohm spends his summers in the zone providing guidance and motivation to our hardworking staff members. A good vach and welcome, Rabbi Bohm. Glad to be here, Ochan and Rabbi Schnell. Oh, yeah, well, it's glad to uh, glad we're here. And uh, here's what's coming up. We're going to be uh, spending really this hour as a dedication to uh, Rabbi, Rabbi Zlotowitz. Um, we will be having prize drawings throughout the night. Uh, inspirational interviews from our Ura family, a discussion about when is enough enough, which I'm just looking forward to. It sounds just absolutely amazing and mind-blowing, and a celebration with Pompadisa every hour. Uh, and so we're really, really excited about that, Rabbi Schnall. And the moving along in the program, our tribute to Rabbi Zlatowitz. Almost a year ago, on Rosh Chodesh Tamas Tavshin Ayin Zayin, the world lost one of the greatest disseminators of Torah in recent history. Rabbi Meir Zlatowitz, one of the pioneering founders of Art Scroll Masora Publications, led the Art Scroll Revolution, a transformation in the availability of Torah literature in English, Hebrew, and many other languages. Rabbi Zlatowitz brought Torah to the bookshelves of hundreds of thousands of homes. Walk into any Jewish home, and you're guaranteed to find at least one safer or many bearing the art school imprint, from the Chumash to the transliterated, transliterated Siddur, translated classics and inspirational biographies. And in recent years, you can find countless mobile devices with the art school digital library. The key of world today would not exist without art scroll and the vision of Rabbi Zlatowitz. Thousands of our Torah mates, the Ura Torah mates, and the children in the zone camps are only able to learn Torah because Art Scroll has made it accessible to them. Art Scroll's work has been a major factor in making it possible to accomplish the Ura mission. We therefore tonight here in Ura are dedicating this hour of the Urathon to the legacy of Rabbi Meir Zlatowitz and the legacy of Art Scroll. We are honored to invite some of the legendary art scroll authors and staff to join us in this tribute. And I'd like to welcome, sitting at the far end of the table, our, our another guest, Rabbi Avram Biederman. Rabbi Biederman, welcome to the Urathon. Thank you very much. Rabbi it's a Biederman pleasure to be is here. uniquely qualified to host a tribute, bringing together these two household names in the Jewish world, Ura and Art Scroll. Rabbi Biederman has been personally involved in URA in a volunteer capacity for decades and has served on his board of directors since 2007. Professionally, he serves as managing editor of Misora Publications, a published author and noted lecturer. Rabbi Biederman is involved in many local, national, and international social, educational, and philanthropic groups. Rabbi Biederman, welcome. Thank to you very much. It's a honor and a schuss to be here. Good, and now we have actually with us in the studio a, a, a wonderful guest uh, who actually is, and we're going to set him up right here, just came in um, unexpectedly, but uh, we're thrilled to be have with us uh, Yisrael Ira Zlatowitz, who's actually the son of Rabbi Meir Zlatowitz. Uh, he's perhaps best known as the co-founder and president and CEO of, CEO of C and CEO, excuse me, of uh, Eastern Union Funding. But he's also a prolific Askin. Um, while still in his teen, teens and in yeshiva, he established the Masbid Gavoa program, which is now active across the country and gives thousands of boys incentives to learn. He has been involved in many tzedakah and chesed projects, both classically and by finding unique ways to give people, including Rabbeim, Parnassus. Seven years ago, uh, he partnered in spearheading a campaign to enable the Orlando Torah Academy to buy their building. Always on the lookout for opportunities to help others in memory of his father, he established um, Rabbi Orlando to serve as a resource to many Jews who visit the city and klaugavoa.org to provide innovative Torah and Jewish resources for, do, for Jews everywhere. It's a good to vach. 
And uh, welcome, and thank you so much for, for, uh, for joining us um, in this uh, segment, which is a tribute to your father. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. So, so we would like to start with uh, an interview that we will have someone who has spent quite a few decades with Rabbi Zlatowicz, a partner. He's the general editor of our school series, Rabbi Nussan Sherman. A mechanic for decades. He edited Rabbi Zlatowicz's first Sefer, Megillah Sester, and he wrote a groundbreaking overview. He partnered with Rabbi Zlatowicz and Rabbi Shia Brander in fa founding Misero Publications, and they worked together ever since, authoring many Oscar titles, including the classic Oscar Sitter, Stone Chumash, and enhancing countless others. It's really a pleasure here at URA to host Rabbi Nasser Sherman. Rabbi Sherman, how are you? A good Baruch Hashem, a good Thanks for having me. It's really a pleasure and an honor. And I would say for someone who's spent so many decades with Rabbi Zlatowicz, working together on a day-to-day -day basis, and I can say for myself personally, I've always been impressed and, um, and inspired by the amount of respect and the amount of covet each one, Rabbi Zlatowicz gave Rabbi Sherman, Rabbi Sherman gave Rabbi Zlatowicz, a lesson to be learned. Rabbi Sherman, spending so much time with Rabbi Zlatowicz, could you please enlighten One, us? How did it all begin, and what would you say is the real void that Klai Yisrael is losing out by not having Rabbi Zlatowicz with us? Well, it began 41 years ago, when uh, Rabbi Zlatowicz at that time had a studio that made wedding invitations, brochures, scrolls for, uh, to give that guests of honor at dinners, things like that, and that's where the name Art Scroll came from. A very close friend of his, a Mechana, a Rebbe in uh, Taras Emes, passed away, died in his sleep, a young man, and Rabbi Zlotowicz wanted to do something in his memory. And Rabbi Zlotowicz is always a man with uh, a lot of initiative, tremendous imagination, and he wanted to do more than just put up a plaque. Anybody could put up a plaque. It was a few months before Purim, and he decided that he would like to do a translation and a commentary on Megillus Esther and finish it by the end of the Shloshim. It was uh, an impossible task, but he did it. He did impossible things all his life, made them work. At that time, I was the Menahel of the Stolen Yeshiva in Borough Park, and we had come to know each other over the years. He asked me if I would edit, which I was glad to do. And then when I was finished editing, he asked me if I could write an introduction, which we called Overview. And it was supposed to be a one-shot thing, a tribute to a friend. And he would go back to his studio, and I would go back to the yeshiva. Well, going, going back is not the right word, because I was in the yeshiva for almost all of the day, and I did the editing work late afternoon and the evenings late in the evening, but surprisingly, this book caught on. More than 20,000 copies were sold, which was a phenomenal number for a Torah publication in those days. In those days, if a Torah publication sold 1,000 copies, it was considered a success. Even in these days, I would say that 20,000 copies is a real success for a Torah publication. Is that true? In these days, it's, either, it's a very outstanding success. Still a very outstanding success. In those days, it was unheard of. And it seems that, that we had touched a nerve. You know, there's a cliche, an idea whose time has come. It turned out that that's what it really was. There were a lot of people who had gone to yeshiva, men, women, and learning was hard for them in Hebrew. And here was something in their own language, their own everyday spoken language, nicely presented. It was a beautiful piece of work. I'm talking about the uh, graphics of it, the typesetting, the, the, the cover. It's because Rabbi Zlotowicz had this background in, uh, in, in graphics, some art scroll. And Rav Shia Brander was also a genius in graphics. So the two of them put together a book where not only the content was excellent, but the appearance of it was excellent. Can I jump in for a moment? Uh, I don't think many people in our audience realize that until that point, 
Um, Jewish books pretty much had one color covers. They were um, boring to look at. I was a teenager at the time when this came out, um, when As Miguel Sester came out. And, and the books were 40, 41 years ago, you were a teenager. I thought you weren't born yet. <laughs> We'll talk about that on Monday morning. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it was really, it was really an incredible thing. The books were written, the, the books that were generally written were in were in a language that didn't speak to the to, to the contemporary audience, and this transformed the entire the entire landscape. Th this landscape that we know today of engaging books, of 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 contemporary novels, of exciting covers, of of even the media, of even the magazines that, that we have today are all an outgrowth of, of, the, of this revolution that began with that Megillus Esther. I think it's fair to say that. Everything else until then was pretty, shall we say, boring? <laughs> yeah, we had a life. saying in the office, if you translate incomprehensible Hebrew into incomprehensible English, you're not doing anything for anybody. <laughs> right. So, uh, so well, we at any rate, we, we were encouraged to go on with Moshe Feinstein and others that obviously there's a need for such things. So keep doing it. Go further. We went on. We did Megillus Rus. We did five Megillus together. And uh, by the end of the year, Rabbi Zlatowicz gave up his studio. The name Art Scroll, Art Scroll sticks because it was familiar. and it's, uh, People liked it. It's a catchy name. But he gave up the studio, and um, I left Stolen, and we both went into this, not full-time, but time and a half, or time and three quarters. And Baruch Hashem, we were able to succeed. What was most impressive, I would say, from Rabbi Zlatowicz is the amount of energy that he had. He could just never stopped coming up with ideas, his creativity. And we have here with us uh, his son, Ira. I mean, you could say from growing up in such a household of someone who was constantly with a turbocharged energy, like a train, a moving locomotive, mm -hmm. wanting to do more, but yet always with that pleasant smile, greeting everybody. I mean, everyone just felt so at home and warm with him. I never knew anybody like him. He had tremendous imagination, tremendous drive, tremendous stamina, and he was able to motivate people to work harder than they thought they ever could. And as much as he got other people to work hard, he worked harder. Shrell, what, what do you say from the back end on this? I, uh, I agree. It was, it was the same in the house and out of the house. So it's, uh, so let's give us some insight. Right. Give us a scoop. I just know from the message that he used to tell to all the kids is that, you know, it's uh, apropos here tonight, you're talking about coming on to the radio, but it's everyone gets these messages sometimes and opportunities and ideas when you're tuned into the right frequency. And then when you have the right frequency, what do you do about it? Some people just take an idea and they keep it to themselves. He took an idea and he acted upon it right away. And... You know, Baruch Shem was sitting here today because it was the initial idea that kept working and working. And what do you think, as far as the impact your father's work and art school had on Kirov in general? I think that's something we're so used to if you're in the uh, from world, you know, art school, art school, art school. But th understanding the, the way that that completely changed the world of Kirov. So I think we, we took back from the family after my father's nifta that, you know, we started getting letters from all over. And you know art school's all over. You know, they make the, you know, the joke, there's ever this Diet Coke, there's art school, you know, they have lines like that. And Chabad. And yeah. Chabad. So <laughs> I didn't know for the audience. You know. But I'm saying, so it's, I think that we, we found that, that you really, ha how much is affecting people that never learned before. And like, you know, I think like Rum said, is that someone could pick something up and actually understand it. And they, 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 they it was the beauty, the whole, the whole package is done right. Any, any specific, you mentioned these letters that came in after your father was nifter. Any Anything specific people that you who remember? Learned, I mean, people who learned, never learned before, picked up and learned all over the world. And they, you know, people that started not from, or, you know, they, they could have gotten the, you know, like you talk about in the, in the rest of the world, you need all different pieces of the puzzle. So there's distribution, there's people going out to care of 101, but what's the textbook they need to use? When they get someone to agree to learn, what do they put in front of them? And that was the, the Siddha, the Chumash, the Gemara, and, you know, and I go and travels myself. Think people that you wouldn't think would learn anything. You know, there's a story. Someone's on a, on a jet blue flight, delayed, and the uh, the pilot comes out. He's learning the daf. <laughs> <and they learn laughs> right. Exactly. These exactly. All the time. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. We're here at uh, Urathon with uh, Rabbi Ira Zlatowicz. Thank you so much right. to uh, Rabbi Sherman for joining us.
uh, this evening. Continued Hatzlocha and success. Uh, what is coming out? What, for whatever you're, whatever's next, whatever the next project for Artul, and we wish you much Hatzlocha, and thank you for coming on with us this evening. Thanks for having me. It's, it was a schus to be on to help Ura in my own small way. Oh, Amen. Thank you very Thank much. You, Rabbi Sherman. So we're here together with uh, Ira Zlatowitz, myself, Rabbi Schnall, Rabbi Bohm, Rabbi Biederman. We have quite the, uh, wi- quite the uh, lineup, and now we have someone else on the phone as we continu- continue this uh, tribute to uh, Rabbi, Z- uh, Rabbi Zlatowitz, uh, Rabbi Shimon Finkelstein, uh, Finkelman, excuse me, Rabbi Shimon Finkelman, who is the author of numerous art school biographies and other works, including the classic Ramesha Feinstein, biography of Ramesha Feinstein, one of the most beautiful and inspiring biographies written about Gedalim. He's also a uh, Rebbe in Yeshiva Darche Teira. Agutavach, Rabbi Finkelman, how are you? So we're here really tonight to talk about Rabbi Zlatowitz and specifically his work in Art Scroll. How well did you know him? How did you get involved in Art Scroll? Uh, I, I, I would say I knew him quite well. And, and uh, it was a schuss to know him, really a schuss. He was very good to me in many, many ways. Uh, number one, he and Yibad Lachem, Rabbi Sherman, who's really my Rebbe, uh, allowed me to join the amazing Habatza Satira of Art School. And it, all, it started when uh, I had an idea for, uh, I always liked to write, and I uh, submitted a sample of a children's book I, was, I wanted to do. And at that time, they had just put out the first youth series biography on the Chafetz Chaim, and they were thinking of doing one of Rebuchan of Wasserman's at Sal. So they said, you know, if you want to write, why don't you try this? And I tried it, and uh, that's how it started. Amazing. So that was the, you wrote the, art, the biography on Rebuchanan? The story of Rebuchan, the youth series book. That was the first book I did. Uh-huh. That, was the first, that was the first book you did. I think the Ramosha book is... Um, I know uh, recently was the anniversary, was the 25th anniversary of the Petir and and they, they, they read that. It's such a beautiful book. How much, how did you, how do you go about, I always wonder how you go about writing a biography. Ramesha was someone, obviously, that everybody knew a lot about. Is it a matter of going and collecting, uh, collecting stories and interviews? It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's interviews, collecting articles written about him. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, with the there really were three of my books, the original one, the 25th one, and then in 2015, a youth, youth series book called The Story of Rav Moshe. And I actually wrote an article about Rabbi Zlatowicz, uh after, he, after his Petira, and about him being a Talmud for life, being a Talmud of Rav Moshe. And I saw it in such a profound way with all three books. It was not, it was not a book to him. It was a labor of love, and he was so... Uh, Macbid, that it should be perf- as perfect as could possibly new, new, was humanly possible, because it was Rav Moshe, he was the God of Hadar. Right, it's a little Rebbe. intimidating, I guess, when you're writing a, a, a so-called biography of Rav Moshe Feinstein. I can imagine that's uh, it's quite the achrayas. It is big achrayas. Everything needs siyata uh, That's the truth of the matter. Without siyata d'shmaya, nothing works. Uh, I, actually, I uh, in preparation for this. Uh, uh, being on the Ura program, I opened the first volume of the art school published in the Gemara, which is Makis, and Rabbi, Sh- Rabbi Zlavit and Belachai Rabbi Sherman end their introduction by writing, they thank Hashem for allowing them to be a quill that records his word, a pen that records his word, they use the word quill. I, I know you know what it means, but in case, it, in case kids are supposed to be asleep or listening, I want them to know what I'm talking about. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what uh, do you think, well, I always wonder with someone, someone like, the, you, 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 very rarely um, do you see someone who's had such a tremendous impact on the from world, um, a change was so innovative, so creative. Uh, it's always tricky to be creative in Claudius role, you, in, in a way, because you always have to stay kind of true to the Messira and, and yet still be creative. What do you think, uh, what do you think about Rabbi Zlatowicz allowed him to be like this? What was it about him that he, he, he was able to be so innovative and creative? Well, he was benched uh, with being very, very talented, a great writer, uh, artistic, uh, innovator, bus- you know, uh, astute businessman, uh, a tremendous imagination. But, as you said, uh, uh, he, he was able to use it the right way and not, in, uh, in, uh, not cross a, uh, a, a line where it was, so to speak, incorrect because he was so uh, subservient to, to Das Torah. 
Rabbi Moshe was his Rebbe for life, and then after Rabbi Moshe was Nifter, even before Rabbi Moshe was Nifter, he was consulting frequently with Rabbi David Feinstein Shlita, Rabbi David Cohen Shlita, and uh, that was a very a major part of his greatness. He didn't take a step unless he was sure that Gadol Yisrael approved of it. Taka, the 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 uh, maybe the secret to his success. Uh, thank you very much, Rabbi Finkelman, for coming on. Uh, this is Rabbi Shimon Finkelman as we continue this tribute to Rabbi Zlatowitz here on the Uberthon in 2018. We're just going to take a quick break and remind everybody of the uh, prize, uh, the prizes that are available. Um, the number to call is one eight seven seven auction. I still seven believe auctions. seven, seven auction. One eight seven 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 auction. Uh, one eight seven 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 auction. You can go on ura.org as well. Ura.org as well um, to uh, win one of these f fabulous prizes. A lot of very excellent prizes, including, by the way, I believe, a um, art scroll library, which mm -hmm. would be, which would be uh, uh, apropos, quite, uh, appropriate. Uh, quite appropriate. Uh, art scroll library. I think it's three thousand dollars worth of art scroll. Uh, you should pull it during this hour. <laughs> what? We should pull it during we should draw it now. We should draw it now. Yeah, we should yeah. draw it now. I don't know. Can we do that, Avram David? Can we just do yeah. it? No, 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 it does, I, do they're it telling you not. Yeah. Yeah. Till we $3,000 in art school. That should get you at least, uh, what? Quite you a get a chance for that much? A little more. You get the chance for three? A little more. You get two chance, probably. You get two chance? Close to it. Close really? to two chance. I'm willing to make an unsolicited offer. The size or the... could raffle for $1,000 at the end of this hour. Whoever's in it so far, you get 1000 still you 3000 at the end. Oh, we got a... Get a special, special are we able to do that? We have a special yeah. offer from Rabbi Zlatowitz. Oh, wow. Wow. So we're at... It's not Rabbi. It's Mr. Mr. Zlatowitz. Uh, Mr. Zlatowitz. Uh, respects my father. I want to make sure that's <laughs> Rabbi. <laughs> okay, so Mr. Zlatowitz, is, uh, so clear, you're adding a thousand to this. No, he's, no, he's saying something else. He's saying do a, a special drawing for anybody that's that's So far that's in the Oscar in raffle by 11.59. By 11.59, we'll do a drawing. Can we do that? I have to ask our people. Could we do that? Could we do that? Could we do that? Avram David? Avram David could do anything. I know. The question <laughs> is, how quickly can he do it? Yeah, yeah. $1,000 towards Art School no, products. No, uh, right. $1,000 towards Art School products. Let's make sure we got that clear. Uh, $1,000 in Art School products. The same For fine print as the other one. The same right. fine print. Same fine print. Okay, Legal great. looking Beautiful. it over <laughs> as we talk. Okay, we're finding the out if that's out. doable. The checking out. And we're uh, going to make it work. We're, we're going to make it work because... But that is an excellent prize. Just one of the excellent prizes we're we have. $3,000 worth of art scroll. Yeah, and a for Rabbi Zlatowicz, I think. Yeah, that would, yeah, that would, be, a, that would be an excellent uh, schuss. We have, I believe, another, uh, another guest on the line. Yes, we have another guest here on the line, Rabbi Pesach Krohn. He's the world-renowned author of the MAGA series and has been inspiring people through his speeches and the written word for several decades. He's also respected and much sought after Mayel. His first Oscar title was his classic work on Bris Mila. He has the distinction of being the only Oscar author to be both the son and the father of Oscar authors. Rabbi Krohn, thank you for joining us. It's my honor and my pleasure to speak on behalf of Oscar and specifically about the Mayor's Lotto, so you could really say on him, Zayshet Sadek for Carter's Lavrocha. So Rabbi Krohn, you're an accomplished author, speaker, which really takes you around the world, that you go to different communities, whether you're performing a bris milah or you're going for a speech, and you encounter many people that we would, so to say, qualify as Ura families, those that we're trying bringing closer to Yiddishkeit. How would you say Oskarl has affected their lives? And then if you could share some insights into Rabbi Zlatowitz in particular and his mission in order to spread Tyra across the entire world. Okay, so let me start really from the beginning as far as my relationship with Rabbi Zlotowicz. And what I want to bring out to your audience is that one never knows how Hashem blesses people, and if you have a certain talent, you never know at what point you're going to be able to use that talent and then affect the entire Kali Israel. Now, when I was a teenager, I was in Camp Akura, and uh, of course we all had color war, and the one who made the most gorgeous banners was a guy by the name of Mayor Zlotowicz. He was a fabulous artist. And after he got married, he went into a business. He was a very close time with the Rabbi Moshe Feinstein. And he used to make invitations, and he did uh, scrolls for dinners and uh, plaques and things like that. And he had a business that was called Art Scroll. That's really how the name Art Scroll came to be. It was really an advertising business or invitations, I should say, and scrolls that they made for those people that were being honored at dinners. 
And then, tragically, in 1976, there was a dear friend of his, Mayor Fogel, who also went to camp with us, and he never had no children. He passed away young, and Reb Mayer wanted to do something very special in honor of his friend. And so he called a, an associate, a friend of his, Rabbi Nelson Sherman, who at that time was the principal in Stolena School, uh, and uh, who had written articles in the Jewish Observer, and he said, look, I'd like to write a commentary on Gillis Esther, and would you do an overview, that's what he said to Rabbi Nelson Sherman, like an introduction, and we'll print it with a Chanish Mosai for this Rabbi Meir Fogel. Now, what happened was, I still remember when it first came out, it was done so beautifully and so magnificently. Shia Brandon was an artist also who worked at Art School, and they presented this book to the English-speaking public, to the Orthodox Jewish English-speaking public, and it sold tens of thousands and thousands of uh, copies. And I'm sure that they were stunned themselves. They couldn't possibly imagine that that's what great success. And the reason that it was successful was because Mayor Zlotowicz wrote beautifully, and he wrote a very short, concise um, commentary on every Pusik, and he only used Halig sources. He used uh, the Alsha, and he used the Malbum, and the Mitsude, so Rashi, and the Morris, and things like that. And the overview, the introduction, was brilliant, and it was presented in a beautiful way. Now, when they realized that so many of these copies were being sold, they thought to themselves, hey, wait a second, maybe we could do, you know, if we did this, maybe we could do Rus, Fish Rus. And so then came Rus, and then came Echa, and then Kehelas, and now the Shiva was, what do we do with Shia Shiram? Because, as everybody knows, that Shia Shirim cannot be translated literally. And here they had written already the four Megillas, and they wanted to do the fifth one. And the one that gave them the biggest critic of all was a gifter of tells. And if you open up the Shia Shirim of Lotsko, you'll see a beautiful letter from a gifter. He gave them tremendous chizuk. And then once they already saw that they were able to do the five Megillas, then they decided that they can do a great cure of job for Qal Yisrael, because now there were so many, many people that were reading these Megillahs and learning Shatim and learning meaning that they never had access to before, and many of them, many people could not read or really understand the depth of all the different Shatim, and they made it so clear and so lucid, it was magnificent. And the truth is, what happened was that I, who always enjoyed writing, I learned writing from my mother, and uh, I, I, you know, I had written some stories in Old Mayor, which was a children's magazine. But then when I saw that this was being done, I called Mayor Zwanowitz, and I said, you know, I would love to write to you. Would I be able to write? So he said, well, what do you want to do? I said, well, I'd love to do Kehalas. He said, no, we're doing the Chomish Megillus, but anything else you want to write about, you write it, and then we'll um, edit it, and we'll publish it. So then I made uh, an error. But, listen, everything is in a Shemayim, and I said, you know what, I'd like to try to write Mishlei. Now, the problem with Mishlei is that Mishlei is a hundred books in one, because every Pesach is a different book. It's not like a storyline. So I started writing Mishlei for them, and then I realized that I, I, it would just be too overwhelming. It was just too big of a job. As a matter of fact, it took 30 years until they themselves were able to get out Mishlei. But then when they started writing on other topics, so, for example, they had something on Kriyashma, they had something on Atzeret Sabdibos. It occurred to me, you know what, maybe I could write on Bruce Mila, because by that time I was a mile 10 years already, and I knew all the halachas as far as Ashkenazi customs and Spadi customs and the Jewish and the Gemaras and the Pshatim and how to prepare for a bris, whether it's jaundice and the medical aspects and all these type of things. And they said, okay, write us a chapter and let's see if you, uh, you know, if, if, if you know, if we, if we like it. And that's what I did. I did together with my mother. We did a chapter. I gave them a whole layout of a book. And, um, and then they said they accepted it. But the thing that was so incredible to me was both about Mayor Slotowitz and the Muslim Sherman's online limiting Zoom times, and what they said, look, you have no deadline. We just want you to write such a thorough book on this meal that nobody in their right mind is going to want to write something in English. Um, for, you know, on Brits Mila. So you just do a complete job and whenever you're ready, you know, that'll be fine. So R- R- Rabbi, Rabbi Krohn, know, knowing, knowing Rabbi Slotowitz for so many years, is there like one story that really stands out that in your relationship, behind the scenes with Rabbi Slotowitz, that you could share with us? 
uh, I just know that he was a tremendous perfectionist. And everything that had to be done, I, um, I don't remember any specific story because, um, well, except that, you know, he gave me the opportunity. I was a model for many of his grandsons, and now he just had another great-grandson, and Mr. Shalom, I'll be doing that first. But I can't say that I remember any specific story. I just know that it was uh, a life. he changed the world of learning, whether it was through the shots, through the mouth. I'll tell you this story. I will tell you this. It's not necessarily about Robert Bonowitz, but it, it has to do with, um, with Rav Shmuel Kamenetsky, who I just spent the Shabbos with and in the Chavetz time, I heard this foundation Shabbos, and, and Rav Shmuel is just the most wonderful person. And what happened was somebody once heard Rav Shmuel on Rosh Hashanah using an Oxmo Master and had the English translation, of course, and um, somebody went over to him and said, Rosh Hashanah, maybe it doesn't pass that the Rosh Hashanah is using an English Master. And um, so Rav Shmuel showed him the Choma Minim, and he asked him, he said, do you know the meaning of all these words? And he said, no. And um, Rav Shmuel said, well, I don't either, and that's why I want to use the Oscar Master, because I feel that when you're talking to Hashem, you should know what you're talking about. So, you know, this idea of making Torah and Tzila and, and Shas available to the masses of tens of and the hundreds of thousands, that's really all the brainchild of Rav Meir and the tremendous team that he put together. So the lesson I believe learned is someone could have a tremendous amount of talent and energy, and if you channel it to try to focus on a spiritual sense, you can really exactly. revo create a revolution and change the entire world. Exactly. That's incredible. You're so right, because it's not, you know, for that passing of his friend, Mayor Falkland, he never would have gotten into this. And here this was a latent talent. And I'll, I'll tell you a, 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 a very interesting story that I've shown Shad Brun once told me about the Nitzvah that the Nitziv once heard his parents crying. And um, he, they said, what's going to be with our son? You know, he's, he's going to end up being a shoemaker. He's going to end up being a barber. You know, he's like a very simple job. And they knew that he had children. And when he heard how his parents were crying, and they didn't realize that he heard it, so he decided that he is going to take learning seriously. And, of course, he wrote the Hamid Dover, and he wrote the, the you know, the Shalos and Chewis, and... Um, so later on in his life, he said that when he was going to get to Elam Abbas, he hadn't heard his parents crying. You know, Hashem would say to him, where's the Hamid Dover? Where's the Shalos and Chewis? Where's all these things that, that, you, that you could have written that you didn't write? So for, so for Rabbi Zlatowicz, they will say, if he didn't create this Oscar revolution, what would all those Torah mates, all those people that Ura influences their lives, where would they be? They wouldn't have That's what right. to study. They wouldn't have That's what to right. learn. So it's not just teaching those who want to learn. It's teaching... Right those who never had the ability to learn, and bringing them closer to Yiddishkeit, I would say Rabbi Zlatowicz probably is not known as that, but he is right. a leader of a cure movement. Uh, yeah. No question about it. No question about it. Yes, tremendous question. I'll tell you something very personal. I know this is going to public, but I, I want to share it with you because of what you just said. I remember a number of years ago that I had a certain personal problem or whatever, and I wanted a tzaddik to daven for me. And I went to Rabbi Nelson Sherman. And um, I came to his office, it was then in Coney Island Avenue, and I asked him, I'm not saying to be able to die, and you know, I have this, this problem. So he said, you've got to be joking. Why are you, why are you coming to me? There are many, many big tzaddikim. I said, I'm not saying, I don't think there's anybody that has a greater schuss of our buttress of terror than you have made followers, you know, and ask It's you know, unbelievable. Who, who has a bigger schuss than our buttress of terror? The truth is, as you started out when you just started interviewing me, you mentioned that I travel all over the world. That's the truth. And whether it's in South Africa or Switzerland or Chile or Mexico or Canada or Israel, every single, without fail, every single Orthodox Jewish English-speaking person has at least one or two arts girls for them in their house. You know what that means? What kind of schuss that is all over the world in every house where they speak English, Orthodox Jews, that's incredible. It's unbelievable. I had an Ura family by me for Shabbos, and the person asked me for an arts girl English sitter so he could follow in davening. The shul didn't right. have one, so we took an Oscar Pesach Machzer, and we turned to Shabbos Chalm by Davening, <laughs> so he wow, could try to follow along. I mean, that's you have to make it work, but that's what they're looking for. Right. They're looking for an English right. Oscar Machzer. It's time to buy your shul, shul. an Oscar Sitter. <laughs> Maybe we can, uh, you know, maybe you'll win the, ac maybe you'll actually win the yeah, raffle because we could they told us we could do it. Yeah. So yeah. we ha we had a weekday Oscar Siddur English. We didn't have the Shabbos one. So you want to eat it all over the world? I was by my shver for Shabbos in uh, Brooklyn, and shul by him. There's someone sitting next to us. We could. He's in, he had the Russian Oscar Siddur. Well, and to follow well, along, he's yeah. only reading in Russian. Yeah, I, I so did buy once uh, for a Russian fellow. I bought him a Russian 
Art school sitters. It, it, it's it's absolutely incredible. How many languages are they? How many languages? The sitters are available in Spanish, in Spanish and in English, Spanish, and uh, Russian. English, Spanish, Spanish, and Russian. The sitters. Un- un- unbelievable. Two more things, and I'll let you go. You know, um, <laughs> you talk about Nitzchias. You know, art school has a an expression. I don't know if their original expression, but the written word is forever. And in that way, when somebody writes or causes writing to be done like a mayor did, by Mayor Zvonowitz, he lives on forever. That is really a, a very true thing, that the written word is forever. And really, the only way that we know the Rambam, you know, you never think about it, but the Rambam was a writer. The Chavetz Chaim was a writer. The Ramban was a writer. Ravina and Ravashi were writers, you know? So we don't look at Ravina and Ravashi as writers. Of course, we look at them as the Tanoim, the Namiroim, the Gemara, but if they didn't write, we wouldn't have the Gemara. So... Writing is a way of keeping the nitzchias of Torah alive for generations. That's the biggest cure in the world, because wherever you go, you know this word can be translated. It's available. It, 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 it is the nitzchias of Torah. It's the nitzchias of Yisra. So that, that's you know we don't look at these people. We don't look at the Chavetz Chaim as a writer, but he really was. Tremendous, tremendous, tremendous. So we're gonna. Thank you very much, uh, Rabbi Krohn, for coming on and sharing with us. Can I tell us. you just one more cute little thing? You, of course. You know what they say, uh, Rabbi Akhrelinsky used to say, right? Akhren Akhren Chovim. That was the Akhren. Yeah. This is the Akhren Akhren. Well, I'll tell you, you know. Wait, when you have a maggot on the ear, there's always those snippets. Well, we'll I would stay with Rabbi Krohn all night long, <laughs> but the <laughs> producer is going to yell at me. But uh, I remember I was sitting with the Zlatowitz family during the Shiva, and uh, Mrs. Zlatowitz said to me, that mayor lived to be 72 years old, and there were 72 volumes in the shafts. Wow. And she smiled. Wow. She said, mm-hmm. I wish you would have made a few more volumes in the shafts. 73, 73, right. I wish you would have made a few more yeah. volumes in the shafts. Wow. Shop. Wow. That, that's yeah. really amazing. A lesson yeah. learned. We could really change the world if we channel our lives. You really can. You, and I'll right tell you what you guys are doing in Ura, I sense to bless you, because it's thousands and thousands of kids, and it's not only them, it's their children and grandchildren and their families. And they wish us to bench you for what you're doing with your talent. And thank you, Rabbi Krohn, for all what you're doing. One person can change the world. Thank you very much, Rabbi Krohn. We just heard how the ins- from insiders on how Rabbi Zlatowitz was really a leader in the cure of movement and how he affected the world. Now let's hear from the actual end users we have with us at Torah Mate Pier that utilizes Oscar to learn Gemara, which would otherwise be inaccessible. Shmuel Septimus. And then Mansalis, Mansalis. Here are Torah mates that have been learning Torah together for many years. They recently completed Mesechtas Brachas, an impossible feat, if not for the Art School Gemara. They will be celebrating this major accomplishment with a grand seum. So let us turn our focus to you, because tonight is your night. You finished Mesechtas Brachas. Couldn't have done it without an Oscar Gemara. We have the Oscar Gemara right here with us. Yeah. It's never the, never it's travel Hebrew, without it. The Hebrew version. The Hebrew version. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. So even with the Hebrew version, we're able to go ahead and it just elucidates yeah. everything that we're, that we're learning. So please tell me a little bit about yourself. How did you start? How many years are you together? How many times did you meet together? So uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank... Um, Ua for matching between Shmuel and myself. Uh, it, it was a teamwork. Uh, we are meeting every Tuesday at 10, 10 15 in the evening for the live? last. And, and you meet in person? Live? live? No. No, Dan uh, lives in Michigan. I live in Boston. Michigan to Boston. Yeah. And each one with an Oscar Gamara. Yeah. And learning. On the phone. On the phone. For how many years is this going on? It's been before we moved to Boston, so it's over eight years. Over eight years at Torah Mate Pier. Yeah. And did you start Masechtas Brachas right away? Yeah. We started. Yeah. We started. So this is tonight is a culmination of eight years of learning. Yes. What a Torah is. Mate. Yes. That's that's really astounding. Yeah. I, I believe I have to just stand up in, in your honor. That's amazing. Give my hand. That's amazing. <laughs> so over these eight years, how many times did you actually meet? We met a few times. We actually, we went to the last Yom Hashas together. The last Yom Hashas, so yeah. you're meeting around Siyumim. Okay, yeah. we, we like that. We made a Siyum on the first parak. Uh, uh, on the first sefer. On the first, on um, volume one of the Art Scroll. On the first, 
So not even the first parak, on the first volume that's one of Art Scroll. Half, half the wow. Yeah. Yeah. A third of the Masechta. Yeah. 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 On the first oh, volume right. one of Art Scroll, they made a seam, and that's the second time that you met. Yeah. So um, you met by the seam Shas. You met by your seam on volume one of Art Scroll and Masechta's Brachas. And, and then? We met a couple of other times. We met on family occasions. Yeah, yeah. Family occasions. Yeah, we became... Uh, so you really, it's like a long-lost family that you are just keep on getting back together yeah. to meet. But religiously, every week on the phone. And we also have, I mean, this is just an example that we have with here, but we have thousands of Torah made peers that are doing exactly the same thing that you're doing, learning Torah once a week for a half an hour, and they could be across the world. Right. I mean, I can say that, you know, uh, I, we started learning when I lived in Lakewood, and there was an ad in one of the local papers, and, you know, we, we, started, we started learning then, and it was, life was much simpler at that point. And it was easy to commit to a, a once a week type of thing. And with so you found out about Ura from an ad in a local liquid paper. How did you find out about Ura? Oh, um, I started uh, keeping Shabbos in 2007. And, uh, That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Wow. And um, started, uh, you know, I wasn't too happy with what was going on with my daughter at school. At, uh, public school and um, who helped me move her to, uh, to a Jewish school. Uh, were, you, were you involved in, with the Ura tuition program? Did they help you with tuition? Yeah. She was basically the last two years of high, uh, high school. And she's already graduated and got married, but we continued. So your involvement first with Ura was uh, about your daughter, yeah. that you wanted to transfer her into, a did Jewish. Ura convince you to transfer it? Or? No, I, I did. But you just needed the help, the tuition help, yeah. to make that happen. So yeah. Ura facilitated I helping from this contribute and towards the tuition. And, start and continued because uh, it, was, it was important to keep it every, every week. And um, also, we also made a promise one to the other that it's not, this is not a climax that now and that's it. We are going to continue with Masechet Megillah. That's with amazing. That's amazing. That's amazing, but if it was one point that I could just stress, when Ura gets involved in a family, and you're an example of that, we don't just focus on one aspect. The tuition program got involved in you, yeah. but we don't want to just lose the family and just be paying their tuition. So we facilitated getting you a Torah mate, and now from the tuition program, we have here an entire Masechta's Brachas that was completed through the Torah mates. Yeah. And keeping that connection alive, that's really taking ownership of an entire family sp spiritual sense, and I'm sure you got packages throughout the year from Uro. Yeah. It really became an extended family for you. Yes. That yeah. it probably, I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but let me know the impact that it had in your life. Like I said, I, I was thanking Uro for getting me into, into this connection because otherwise we wouldn't have done it without the... Uh uh, well, another point that maybe not everybody realizes specifically about art scroll, is that people think that art scroll, we focus more on the English version of the art scroll Gemaras, and for those who aren't, have never learned Gemara before, it's a tremendous aid, as it says on the cover, to Talmudic study. However, the, even Israelis who can speak and read Hebrew fluently, it's not, Aramaic, it's, it's not so it? simple. Aramaic, even though it's Hebrew letters, is still not easy. You can't just open it up and read it. It's a foreign and language. Right, it's still <laughs> a foreign language, even though it might look very similar. And so <laughs> by having the ability of opening up a Gemara, which fills in you know, w w fills in the real, I mean, from Israeli, he knows, you know, what Hebrew really is, and it that really kind of just opens up a whole new world, which is something that a lot of the English speakers may not realize what a treasure it is uh, for those who have an Israeli you background. I wanted to say, you want to say Hey, correct me if I'm wrong, I know that they we're going to start writing the Hebrew Gemara. You haven't told my father, you're crazy, who's going to read it, who's going to buy it, no one needs it. I think today it's almost more than 50% of the uh, uh, close. I understand it's not so more of wow. the Hebrew than in the English. Uh, you shall me for sure. Right. Well, but I mean, I can say even for the English speakers, there's uh, so much more content that's put in the Hebrew articles. It's what's interesting to different audiences. Yeah. Exactly. But you actually remind me something that I heard uh, from your father. He mentioned that there was a certain Gadol in Eitz Yisrael that was using the English article, and he asked him, why are you using the English article? He says, that helps me learn English. <laughs> 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 Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that would ha help me brush up on my Hebrew. But I did just, <laughs> I did just meet a Hasidish young man who told me that he did, he was in a program to learn English and he used Art Scroll to learn English. He used Art Scroll Gemara to learn English. To help him learn English. But I mean, one point I just have to really bring to, to light, which is what we're really seeing here. Your father never met them. 
and but they finished the Sechus like Brachas. And he's in, and he's in Michigan, and he's in, and he's in, in Massachusetts. Boston, yeah. And it's not just yeah. people who are doing Daf Yemi who are using their Oscar. This is a cure of move, mo- movement of Torah mates that finished the Sechus Brachas, and this is just another feather in your father's cap. And, there, and this is one of hundreds of thousands. Hundreds. Of thousands. Right. Yeah. That's really amazing. This is Thank a Torah made peer. And is there anything that you want to just say in closing that people should get Torah mates to continue emulating the remarkable work that you've been doing here together? Yeah. I could just say uh, from my perspective that I know that in the beginning it took some toggling to figure out the right time that works consistently every single week. And sometimes people are perhaps hesitant to get a Torah mate because you think it's this big undertaking. I think by now we got it down to a science where we don't have to we think like about it as much yeah. as we love each other, but we don't have to think about Amazing. it more than a half hour a week. So a half an hour a week, eventually, you can finish a Masechta. And change lives. And change shas. lives. Oh, finish shas. Shas. They're going, shas. They're going from Megillah next. 18777 auction. You could also sign up to get a Torah mate and continue emulating the wonderful work that and relationship that, that I mean... Kudos to you. Congratulations. Amazing. Excellent job. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Once again, everybody can call in right now at one eight seven 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 auction one eight seven 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 auction We're going to do the raffle very shortly for the $1,000 towards uh, Art Scroll Sephorim. We're going to be having some more Pumpadisa very shortly. But right now, on the phone with us is Rabbi Yechiel Spiro, who is a well-known speaker and author of the Touched by a Story series. Best-selling author for many years. A Rebbe at Yeshiva Chabad Chaim in Baltimore and a Clevelander par excellence. A good Tavach, Rabbi Spiro. How are you? Good Vach, good Vach, fellow Clevelanders. <laughs> good Vach, fellow Clevelanders. That's right. That's right. This is just going to be. Uh, so tell us, you're here obviously to talk about Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi Zlatowicz. Tell us a little bit about your relationship with him and uh, your impressions of him, your thoughts of him and his legacy. Okay, so first of all, thank you so much for having me. I do have to tell you that I feel bad. I'm starting off with a joke, by the way. I feel bad I don't have my popcorn with me. I don't, I don't remember receiving one from Ura, but I'm hoping to get one in the mail soon. You, you don't have your that? what? Popcorn. The po- Pop- popcorn. Right? Pop- that That's terrible. That so we are dispatching <laughs> a courier. We are dispatching a courier as we speak. Maybe Hopefully we'll say uh, yeah, thank you. Maybe we can get, we'll get there. You'll get there before before Freddie gets Maybe there. Maybe we can get five in the morning. to deliver so it by hand. For the last hour with Freddie and and uh, Rum Kravitz, you'll have the popcorn. Yeah. All right. So um, let, let me, we, we, I'm not going to tell you so much about my own personal relationship with Rabbi Ladowitz, but more in terms of what he did um, for me is really the same thing he did for everybody, and that is uh, he he opened the world. He opened the world of possibility and made dreams come true. I want to tell you one story that happened. I was involved with, not as a writer of Art Scroll, but I was a Rebbe, and there was a kid in my class who was diagnosed uh, with Yanomachla with cancer. And uh, Baruch Hashem, he's fine today. He has a beautiful family. But when he was very, very sick, uh, the Make-A-Wish Foundation asked him, what do you want to, what do you want as your make a wish. Do you want to go to Disneyland? Do you want to go to Disney World? Do you want to go to Israel? What do you want to do? And he said, he reached out to me and he said, would you be able to reach out to Rabbi Zlatos and ask him, would he be able to get me an art scroll shots? Now, you have to understand, we're talking about a boy who was wondering about his future, Bechlau, completely, didn't know if he would be living, but he was certainly behind in his learning because he was in and out of hospitals for a few years. And he didn't know what was going to happen. And he knew that no matter what happens, he'd always have the ability to learn because he has his art scroll. And it wasn't only for him. He did that for the entire world, for the entire here world, for those irreligious Jews. You know, you, you, you decide, okay, I'm going to make the huge move to become a religious Jew. I'm going to keep Shabbos. But in the back of your mind, certainly many, many years ago, you got to wonder yourself, well, how far is it going to get me? Am I ever going to be able to catch up to those who have been doing it their whole lives? And Art Scroll makes that dream come true. He makes the dream come true for everyone. It makes it happen for, uh, for, for somebody just becoming religious. He makes it happen for a balabas. You know, a guy goes to yeshiva, here in Kailo, maybe, yeah, maybe not. He's not an accomplished Tom Chochem by any stretch of the imagination. And then 
he goes to work, and suddenly he decides to get turned on a little bit to learning. Well, how can he make up for his lost time? How, how can he become a Talmud Chacham? An art scroll does that. And that art scroll can also, I, there's a tremendous tzaddik, his name is Reb Getzel Fried, he used to borrow my Hebrew art scroll because he wanted to see the notes on the bottom. And he would even compare the notes on the English art scroll to the notes on the Hebrew if he could get one more point of clarity. So it, it, it upped the game for everybody, for the novice and for the accomplished on the Chacham. And that's really what Rabbi Zalot did for me. Um, I, I told the story a couple times to the people in art school, and a special hello, of course, to Avram Biederman, hello. my dear friend. Hello, Rabbi Hill, hello, Rabbi hello. Hello. Yeah, hello, hello. You. So I, I, I put out uh, my uh, ten stories, which were really chicken scratch. There was nothing there. It was very poorly written. Um, in fact, my wife had written it for me, and <laughs> Um, and I sent it into Art Scroll. I sent it to a few publishers, by the way, and they turned me down. And um, Art Scroll said, okay, we're going to take it. And I said, you know, what, what do you mean you're going to take it? I only have 10 stories. And they said, you'll get more. I said, well, how do you know? He goes, we believe in you. We believe in you. And when I, they came out with the first book, Touched by a Star, I remember, Avram, do you, I don't know if you remember this conversation. He <coughs> called me up, and they said, this is the subtitle of the first book. Um, uh, inspiring stories told by a master teacher. And I said, master teacher? Who's the master teacher? And I, I said, I'm not. And I've run him in, and you, I, don't, I don't know if you remember this. He said to me, well, now you are. You'll see. And it made me look at myself in a completely different light. And I'm not carried away. I'm pretty grounded. But it gave you what to shoot for. We did First buy you a bigger size hat, though, after that. Say what? We did buy you a bigger size hat after that. <laughs> Yeah, it's a bigger size suit, too. But, um, <laughs> and then uh, eventually they, they, they put out the book. The first advertisement read, introducing a brand new series. And I called up and I said, series? Who's writing a second book? They said, you are. <laughs> and that's really how it started. And Baruch Hashem, you can call my mother and ask her how many books I put out. But uh, – it's been more than two, Baruch Hashem, and uh, Baruch Hashem. I really have Rabbi Gladowitz to thank for that, and he and Rabbi German and, and Rabbi Brander, and of course Avram, and Gedalia has done an incredible job, and he uh, has been so helpful and so encouraging along the way. And believe me, there are bumps in the road, and they can tell you a lot of stories about it, but even when, they, even when there was sometimes constructive criticism, it was always with a, uh, especially with Rabbi Gladowitz, it was always Tyre and then he would, you know, he would, he would uh, tell me what had to be said, and then he would sign the email, the Ava Mayor. So, you know, it was a combination of, of uh, tough love and, and, and just smothering love. And he built you and he encouraged you, and that's really what he did for everybody. He gave you dreams, and he made your dreams come true. And, and he did it for everyone, and it's a very, very special um, gift that he gave to call yourself the Jewish people. And I'm, and I, and he gave, and especially to those Jews who have never been, never dreamt of the possibility of of uh, connecting to Torah, and he did it. And we are back, continuing the tribute to Rabbi Meir Zlatowitz, which we've heard in the previous segment. How much, how much has been impacted in Kalal Yisrael due to the effort, the vision. And what we, we consider today the legacy of Rabbi Zlatus, we have on the line with us Rabbi David Ashir, who inspires people daily with his daily Amuna series, his living Amuna series, now with volumes for adults, teens, and children, has sold well over 100,000 copies and has transformed the hundreds of thousands of lives across the world with, his, with its message of Amuna, faith in God. Welcome to the Urathon, Rabbi Asher. Thank you, thank you. Uh, it, it, it's an honor for me to have this opportunity um, to speak about such a great man. You know, on a personal level, I remember the first meeting I had with Rabbi Zlatowicz. I was sitting in his office with uh, a couple of other people, and we were discussing the option of having a book on Emunah, and here I was, I didn't know anything about writing a book, 
I was a young, and he's he's he is a man who has been in the and been in the business for decades, and he's asking me for my opinion, and he's valuing my opinion, and he had such humility the way he was talking the whole time, and from that moment on, he only it only the honor that he gave only increased anything I ever asked. He never told me. You know, go to my secretary or do this. It was always personally handled by him. I remember once I wrote an email to him regarding a certain issue, and he re he replied. And on the top of the email, it said three times, "Urgent, urgent, urgent." And he cc'd a few people, and he said, "We must take care of this matter immediately." And just the the, the honor that he gave people was just something inspirational. That was on. That was how I know him on a personal level, and of course, what he has done for Kral Yisrael, the amount of Torah that he has spread throughout the world, making Torah available to people from all backgrounds, and especially the Gemara, how people could just sit and open up an art scroll and learn with everybody else. They could be in the Daf Yomi, whatever it is. It's just uh, amazing to see how many people they have reached and how effective it's been. And you would think, you know, something like this, something of, of such great um, enormity, how affecting, you know, really the entire quality of so you would think it must have been that the rabbi had a plan and a strategy, and he was building it for years. But somebody told me something interesting the other day. They said they asked him, they said, what was your vision when you, did you imagine all this? He said, no, I didn't have a vision. I just, I just did, I just started, he wrote, he translated one book, he translated, I think it was Megillat Esther, and people were enjoying it, and he says, okay, let's do another one, and it just led, and, and kept going and going until you see today the, uh, the, 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 uh, the magnitude of what he has accomplished, the siyata dishmaya that he has had, and it wasn't, uh, it was just, it just came, Hashem helped him, it's reminding me of of a uh, short thought I once read from Rabbi Moshe, from Rabbi Meir Shapiro, how Abraham, Hashem once told Abraham, we know he told him, he says, I want you to go outside and count the stars in Tuchalis Porotam, if you're able to count them. And he says, so too shall be your children. So Rabbi Meir Shapiro said, of course, Abraham followed instructions and he went out and started counting the stars. But Hashem said, that it's impossible. So why do you want to count the stars? And he said, the reason is Hashem was giving him a very important lesson. He said, and for you, Abraham, it's not important, all the details, if it's possible, if it's not impossible. You just go do. You start it, you do it. You see, I tell you to do something, you do it, and you have me. You have siyata dishmaya, I'm going to come and help you, and I'll finish the job. And they told him, the same applies for your children. You can't go into something saying, yeah, I'm going to affect the whole Kuala Yisrael. I'm gonna... That's not your, your business. You see something good, you do it. And if you have, you have Hashem on your side, He takes care of the rest. He takes care of the details. Hashem has blessed Rabbi Zlatowicz with tremendous siyat He has, he has a, an enormous zikhuyot. And Be'ezrat Hashem will continue learning all the Sefarim, and they'll keep coming out with more, and they'll keep inspiring Kuala Yisrael until Mashiach and B'mera be Amen. 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 Thank you very, very much for joining us tonight. I think that the story of Art Scroll, the story of Rabbi Zlatowicz, is really something which goes way beyond just the Gemara, just the Gemara, the Tam, the Shas. Your book, Living at Muna Siri, is 100,000 copies Whoever would have dreamt that 100,000 copies of any Jewish book would be sold. And this is something that was done in, 2000, in the 2000s. Recently, I believe that your series is one of a kind. I've never seen anything like it. I personally own many of your books, and I try my hardest to read it every day. It's hard. But I try my hardest yeah. to read at least one part every single day. In our house, we read it by the Shabbos table, one story, every, one thing from Living Amuna. As we go through well, it every uh, uh, Shabbos and uh, Yom Tov. Yeah, Maybe I'll start doing this. Thank you. But that's a great way yeah. how to do it, and it's something which is innovative. It was unique. It was not the typical, and because of that, 
hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of people have had their lives changed for the better. Thank you very, very much for coming. Shavua Tov. Thank you. Hatzlacha Raba. Amen. And we are going to move on to Rabbi Biederman, who has our next caller on the line. Rabbi Besser? Good Tzach. Good Tzach, Rabbi Besser. How are you? Hey, hey, Don Rabbi Thank you for joining us. We're here it's live. It's such an honor to be here. I have to tell you that, like, till now, all the years, I always dreamt of being under a ton, and I was never invited. And uh -huh. the only way I could feel like I was on was by trying to text you and get you to laugh while you were on. <laughs> so this is very special for me. Okay, let me tell the people about Rabbi Besser. Okay, Rabbi Besser, are you, you uh, seat-belted in? You're an art school author, the author of the forthcoming biography of Rabbi Zlatowicz. Yeah, so you're the, perfect, um, you're the perfect candidate to wrap up this segment. And we're going to be releasing that, that volume just in time for the... We're going to be releasing it at the tribute dinner for Rabbi Zlatowicz, the Missouri Heritage Foundation Legacy Dinner on June 5th. Rabbi Besser is a well-known writer. He's been contributing editor at Mishpacha Magazine since 2006. He has published biographies of Rabbi Shlomo Freifeld, Rabbi Shaila Karastir, and Rabbi Lazer Geldsailor, with more titles on the way. So you have a very varied, varied uh, group of people that you've written about. So mm -hmm. having been the author of the Rabbi Zlatowicz biography and working on it, I know you're, you're not done yet. You're almost there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What can you share with us? What, what's different? What's unique? What did you learn in writing this biography? What was unexpected? You knew Rabbi Zlatowicz. You met with him. You interviewed him. You interviewed a lot of people. What was unexpected or unique um, about in working on this book or working on this biography? I think that the first thing that stands out is when, I, when we went into the project, it was approached um, very much. Um, it wasn't your conventional Godel biography or a yeshiva or a rabbi or like somebody like, this, like the personalities you mentioned. It was a different sort. I expected it to be a book about his vision, his impact, his reach, his determination, so many things that you've been speaking about all night, and I had the benefit of hearing everybody before me. And everything they said is so true, and well, Amir Tashem shined through from every page of the book. But I expected it to stop there. It was a story about what he did. I didn't realize how much of the story would be not just about what he did, but about what he was, the person, the father, the husband, the grandfather, the friend, the boss. The, the person that, that people could just call, the person that you could pick up in the middle of the day if you were having a, a rough time in a personal situation. He was the guy in your shul that you would call also. The heart of Rabbi Zlata was the impact he had on those so close to him, and that you don't always find. That was unusual to me. I know that my co-writer of the book, it's going to, people think it's my book, it's really me and Ira together, is sitting there in studio <laughs> with you. And uh, so many of the stories, you know, to, to Ira, and of course, to Gedalia, it wasn't a surprise, but to me, it blew my mind. The amount of stories that you thought you'd be taught, it was like a totally different book. Nothing to do with art school. The man. Somebody commented to me that they believe that, his, that, that there's very much a lot of tandem there. That, um, that giving, that nature that he had of giving, that warmth, that his concern for other people, really, art school was a manifestation of those, of those characteristics, those of his personality, of his giving, of his concern for others. What would you say? It's funny that you say that. I think that Amir Tashem, and I hope that people will read the full book, they'll put that together. I was listening to Rabbi Ashir speak just now, and he, obviously he's synonymous with Amuna, and I was thinking it's so fitting for him to be speaking because the mayor's story is not just a story about Amuna in the Rabbi Shalom, it's a story about Amuna in people, like you heard from Keeley earlier. So really from everybody who spoke, Rabbi Krohn, Rabbi Finkelman, um, Rabbi Sherman obviously was, before Rabbi Meir came along, he was on, on his me. way to changing Kali I didn't tell you my story, but it was Amuna and me too. Everybody, everybody in your office, and you all give a, a, a rum. You know what you've done for me personally. That yes. means you know that you've conveyed that to younger writers again and again and again. Every one of you, it's, it, it's, it's in the ear at our school, that Amuna. It's Amuna and people, and Amuna that people can be great. I have to tell you something incredible. Can I tell you a story? What? Go ahead. It's, it's in the book, Mr. Shem, but Rabbi Zlatos didn't go to conventions. He didn't, he didn't go to Shabbos conventions. He liked to be with his family, and he also felt that Art Scroll is a Kali Yisrael organization. You had to work and understand that very well, what it means to have to reach everybody and impact everybody and work with everybody. So he felt that by going to most of the conventions are affiliated with a specific organization, be it a good or be it OU, be it somebody else. So he felt, I can't go. I belong to Art Scroll. I belong to Kali Yisrael. When uh, Torah and Mastoros started their, their uh, lay leaders convention, the president's conference, he said he wanted to go. Because he didn't see it as an organization, he saw it as an opportunity to spend Shabbos with young people who were doing for the cloud, as board members, as fundraisers. He said, I have to give them chizuk, that's what I do. This is a hotel full of people who I have to build up, and I've got to do that for them. That means 
even what you guys are doing tonight, the, the young people and the energy of the people at URA, is exactly what he stood for. It was, it was so much wider than Art School. Like you said, Art School was an outlet for some of that. Right. Right. Uh, very much. Okay. So thank you very much. Anything else you oh. want to add, Rabbi, Rabbi Besser? The baker that they should send me a smorg. I asked the lady who called me, and she said she's going to do it. It's in the mail. takes a while okay, to get to Canada. You want a five-ish, too? A, a little bit uh, like the art school checks. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, we won't discuss that. We'll take that off the air. So it's a better request than <laughs> we'll popcorn. Discuss, we'll discuss that off the air, Rabbi Messi. <laughs> Thank you. We will get you a smorg. We just got we'll confirmation. The producers just guaranteed us that the smorg will be on its way. I want to hear it from Avi. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Avi has no more pull in that department, though. So I will give you, I will give you my copy of the Schmorg. Avi will give you a free... I'm on the board, he's not. So I don't think you're getting Avi smorg. will give you a free membership to our Goodness Israel of New Jersey. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what Avi can give you right now. No, like no more Schmorg. I'm feeling so overwhelmed. I feel like you just called the phone. I want $18,000 cash. Just like that? Mine? No <laughs> strings attached? What, Avi? But me or, me or Avi? So I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, we'll do a quick interview for the Mishpacha, and in exchange I'll give you my copy of the Shmorg. But Avi wants three pages. <laughs> Avi wants three pages. No, no, I'll settle for just a one-pager. How about an inscribed biography? I know what I'm working on. I'm working on a full-page <laughs> interview. It doesn't have to be in the Pesach or like the big editions, the regular weekly edition. And what, so you, and what, you would make your tie all the way for that? I was about to tonight? say the tie has to be, the button has to be closed and the tie has to be up for that picture. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rabbi Besser. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now the moment, thank you so much. The moment you have all been waiting for. But before for. we hear the, before we get to that moment, really, and we wrap up the segment and the tribute in honor of Rabbi Zlatowicz, we have here joining us tonight in the studios live in Ura, in Lakewood. We are very grateful and thank you, Ira, for joining us tonight, for being here throughout the tribute. You've heard much, probably almost everything you've heard, you've heard already. And uh, you know a lot, you've heard a lot more than what's been said tonight from those people that were on the phone with us tonight. However, to someone like me, or someone like Rabbi Bohm, someone like Rabbi Biederman, or any one of the thousands of people that are listening and that are online watching, they know, we know Rabbi Zlatowicz as the person that founded Art Scroll, the man that disseminated Torah throughout the entire world to countless amounts of people. And there's probably thousands of stories affiliated with that you on the other hand have a unique vantage point you were someone are someone that knows rabbi slatowitz as a son knows a father and no one no one except for your brothers and your siblings could give over that experience there are on the line on the website the radio people across the country that are tuned in right now across the world actually across the world actually it's all as well unless it's still shabbos there now but there are. This is a Kirov organization. I mean, Shabbos is over seven but, hours earlier there. And remember, of course, you can always call the 1877 auction to call in your final He's in the auction zone. tickets. Right. So, Ms. Ladowitz, Iris Ladowitz, can you please give over to our listeners from your vantage point about your father? It's, an, uh, it's, it's tough to sum it up in just a couple of minutes here. Uh, I know you have till 4 a.m. We have but, till 4. Yeah. I, know, but, uh, I was told I don't, have, I don't have that slot. No, well, if you keep throwing in extra prizes, you know. You can. Okay. Well, from no, knowing your father, you had the power of taking a lot of stuff and putting it in a few right. words. So, so I, think that Rabbi like Besser, I think Rabbi Besser is going to do a great job on the book that's going to come out. And um, I think along the, the theme that you were saying before, that, that Rabbi Biedem was saying before, is that a lot of from himself is always rooting for the underdog. And really, I think that if the whole art scroll going out into the world is really how could that someone who has any disadvantage and use an excuse he can't learn be able to provide everything that all the tools that that person could need but another thing instilled in the in the family always that you know you know and really it's anyone could can uh, reach great heights the some give everyone talents their own unique talents and a lot of people you know say it's not for me it's not my ability to do it and you have to be able to hear that call and do something i'm saying this with the utmost respect it's written in the book and this is real you know, where I think that it's really a lesson to everybody. People think that, you look at these great organizations started by some of this great person. When it started, the Rabbi Zlatowicz then was uh, Mayor Zlatowicz, or, you know, and um, was in Camp Monk, you know, overweight, didn't play sports. <coughs> he stuttered, and he has graphic talents. That's what he had. And it started from there, Rabbi Monk taking him under his wing and told him, start to use those talents to make those beautiful signs on all the bunks and learning programs and whatnot. 
And it started from there, and he started to build up his confidence. He taught himself how to, how to not stutter. He worked on himself that, uh, to perfect that part. And he started from nothing, and he went up to, to uh, where it became. But yes, the Das Torah was embedded in. There was no move that was made without, um, without Das Torah of Moshe. And now we were, I was brought up with Rabbi David Feinstein. David, the relationship, I would say that, Rabbi Zlata was had with Rabbi David, is probably one of the closest. Absolutely uh, unique. Uh, they spoke every unique. day, and they right. go on vacation every year. Right. So that, 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 that was the Yerusha we got. We got the private phone number. Right. So Rabbi David, we could, as all the kids, able to uh, you know, get and through. Rabbi David is not the easiest to reach. Yeah. And Rumor was, if you need to get through to Rav David, Rabbi Yislatowitz is the ticket in. Right. So I know that, on that, on, on, on that end of it, I think really is starting from anywhere. And I think that, um, you know, a, a big lesson that he taught us also is that it's a schus to be able to, to have the art scroll and, and be able to give a tire that way. And, you know, people ask a lot of times, who's your, who's, who's your role model? And he also, he, the, the favorite story in line was always the Chavetz Chaim. He always spoke about the story to be able to, if you go back in time, to spend time with the Chavetz Chaim. And, he's, and the famous story, the Chafetz Chaim's son um, heard his father, the Chafetz Chaim davening, and he's, he's talking to the Baruch Shalom, it, it's saying to the Baruch Shalom, let's make a cheshbon, what did I do for you, and what did he do for me? And he says to the Baruch Shalom, what you did for me, is you let me write the Mishnah Brewer, and he listed all the Sfarim to, 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 to let him write. And he turns to the Baruch Shalom and says, let me do something back for you. And what can I do for you? And that was a very strong point to my father, that if the certain people reach their level of success, it goes the other way. They turn around, and where's that car? It goes in reverse. And they say to the Rosh listen, I'm Yitzhak. I gave my tzedakahs here. Look what I built the art scroll. Like, there's never a time. I guess my father, you ever look back and say, you know, this revolution is me, and I did it. And, you know, he, he said, that's it. I'm Yitzhak for the rest of my life. I have a free ticket for the rest of my life. And he never took it that way. Each Always time to go to back, more. looking to do more. And Baruch Hashem, the mission is going to continue. My brother, Gedali Zlatovitz, is, is, is took over. And he's making really sure the vision is continuing. Job. And um, yeah, incredible. And, the gonna, and uh, June 5th, is gonna be, they're going to have their, uh, you know, it's, it's right before the yard sites. And uh, Tuesday is already, we're stopping to say uh, Kaddish already. Tuesday's the last day until wow. a year. It's almost came year flies. Yeah. And um, listen, that's the, the lesson. I think the book for me, to be able to see it go out there, and Rabbi Besser, the, the, the schus that he has to be able to... Uh, Take Amazing. stories and make it come alive. That's a lesson for all. We do have the thousand dollars. Yes, you, uh, why don't you go I, ahead uh, yourself? I, I want to just first thank Ira. Thank you so much for coming tonight. And because you went That's over, we're going to add something. Ooh, we're going to add something. something. Oh. Should this be another winner? Another winner. Another we winner. Can the, the, we can do that later. At the, at the late, at the we'll end of the night. You'll stick around until later. To, uh, I don't know, <laughs> four o'clock. You know. But I think that we're going. We're going to add. We're going to raffle off at the end one hundred of his Lotto's books to be the oh. So to those uh, at the right. end, we got that one hundred of the Rabbi Zlatowitz biographies. So, so if they they now we got now we got fifty. Monk, Monk, Monk from ADM Processing, the most amazing company. I got to give a little plug. He's able to pull up this raffle in fifty-nine right. minutes. Right. And in true fashion, he came over to say technica technically we couldn't have it at ten fifty-nine, not because he's late. But because in order to process the people who bought it didn't tell 59, exactly. he has to make sure that it uh, went a little bit further. Exactly. And before we announce the winner, really just one your, quick... If you really want your early copy of the book, you have to come to the dinner. But anyway. Yeah. Before we announce the winner, just one quick, one quick thought that this tribute tonight to Rabbi Meir Zlatowitz at an Ura radiothon, some people may be wondering what is the connection. And I spoke about it when I introduced the tribute. I think it should be mentioned again that the bottom line is we hear all about Ura and the Torah mates and the kids in camp and the, the Ura honor roll and kids finishing Mesechtas and kids learning Aleph Beis. The bottom line is, from a, from a Torah mate it would not perspective, have there's no way I would, be learn, I would be able to learn, or probably all of our Torah mates, without the art scroll Absolutely. something. Absolutely. Whatever it may be. Something. The art scroll something. Whether it's the Sidri camp, whether it's the Chumashin camp, everything is always goes back. I, Give me an art scroll. I, I will find I out. You know that, uh, you know that your order. wife, I believe, was actually the first, when we talk about connection, was the first Ura employee. Really? The first Ura employee. Know. You didn't know that. I didn't know. It was wow, a secret wow. job. It was a secret job. That's what, that's what they're telling wow. me. I know the that first I, Ura employee. I know that the one connection with Ura that we had is that I started Masman Goy the same year Ura started. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, okay, wow. but, I put wow. it, that's but that's what they're telling me. The I don't you have to ask them if it's true. They're trying to come out with the Torah mates is that when the two Torah mates want to learn on the on the those that have an app with it, you they can press a button and has the odds on both sides. Yes, through clockgevoa.org. Yeah. They're yes. trying to develop that technology. And now we are ready for the winner, the first winner of the night of the 2018 Ura auction. But it's not the first winner of many. Is I would take it away. Ephraim and Pearl Sharbani. Yay, Mazel Tov. 
LT Swirl, they'll have to pick it up at the Oscar Studios. Or $1,000 towards Oscar Studios. Was it, was it, was it, was it, probably they'll take the Hebrew Art Swirl. Right. And now we're going to move along with our segment. Thank you very much, Ira, again for coming. It truly has been an honor to be able to, so it truly has been an honor to be able to have you on the radio tonight. It's not easy coming out on a Matzah Shabbos. Um, and we are very, very appreciative. And may the, the Shama continue to be a male association for Klau Yisrael, which he so greatly impacted, and specifically for his family, for his children, the grandchildren, and for Dairis. Thank you very, very much.